Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a charcoal drawing of this rhino and I'm going to be showing you some ways and techniques that you can make a complex and detailed drawing like this a little bit easier. Now if you want to see more content and a full length video you should check out my Patreon. For now we're going to have a look at this one. The size of the paper is going to be around 9 times 12 inches and the paper is about 200 GSM. Uh, these are my drawing tools. I'm going to be using charcoal pencils and these are Kohino Joconda charcoal pencils. I'm going to use a pencil eraser, a kneaded eraser, a piece of uh, charcoal, a charcoal stick and I'm also going to use some vine charcoal sticks. So vine charcoal sticks and compressed charcoal sticks. I'm going to explain the difference between these two uh, a little bit later. Um, so, so that's it for now. Uh, we are ready to start. The first thing I'm going to do is the sketch, of course. And while I'm doing the sketch, I'm going to say a few words about the reference. Because I had to make a few changes to it. Now. The composition is simpler, but the changes I made uh, had mostly to do with the contrast and the background. Um, as you can see in the reference, um, the, there is a nice contrast between the light side and the shadow side, but I wanted to push that contrast even further, which is why I'm going to make the shadow side a bit darker and the light side a bit uh, lighter relative to it. And also I wasn't really happy with the background because uh, there's a lot of stuff in that background which makes things, um, which makes it a little bit difficult to understand the shape of the main subject and also it may be a little bit too distracting. So I decided to simplify the background and make it darker to achieve two things. First, I wanted to enhance that contrast between the background and the light side of my main subject and I also wanted to simplify the background so that uh, it wouldn't distract from the main subject so that we could focus on the rhino itself. Uh, there's also going to be some other interesting things to talk about like for example connecting this large shadow area into a, a single darker shape and I'm going to talk about uh, the benefits of this as well but for now I'm finishing this sketch and I'm going to be moving on with some shading and uh, a little bit more work with my charcoal sticks. So the next stage is um, covering at least a part of the background. Uh, what I'm going to be using first is a piece of charcoal. It's a charcoal stick, uh, a soft charcoal stick, uh, but this is compressed charcoal. It's not natural uh, vine charcoal or willow charcoal. The thinner one is uh, vine charcoal. So this one, uh, what are the differences? Um, this one is a little bit darker. It's a little bit more permanent in the sense that it sticks to the paper a little bit more. And uh, it's uh, it's a bit more difficult to move around and it's a little bit more difficult to erase but it's definitely a bit darker and it's good for creating these uh, larger darker backgrounds or, or uh, creating larger dark areas and the quickest way to do that of course is to use your finger as a blending tool that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not going to use some other blending tools, but uh, when blending with charcoal, when covering these large areas, when doing these uh, larger portions of the background, your finger is probably your best blending tool. And the other reason why the finger works so well is because the texture of your skin and the oils of your skin kind of push that charcoal into the grain of the paper and uh, they make sure that if you wanted something to be darker it remains darker whereas some other blending tools can have a slightly different effect making it a little bit lighter. Sometimes you have to rotate your drawing as well uh, so that you can have a little bit more control uh, 
or precision when you're pushing the uh, when you're pushing the charcoal all the way to to the edges and of course there's going to be a lot of mess and you ha you're going to have to clean your fingers every now and then because you're going to be putting down quite a bit of charcoal in a darker scene like this so the next thing I did, I did a little bit of cleaning up of the edges around the ear and the top of the body on the left and after that I put in some darker lines before I start some larger shading. So the next uh, step here will be to separate the light side and the shadow side. I want to establish that larger relationship, that larger contrast and now if we look at the reference uh, once again, and I'm going to put the reference in the description as well so that you can examine it a little bit more. So if we look at the reference, uh, you can see that clear contrast between the shadow side on the left and the light side on the right, which means that the light source is coming from the right side and everything is going to be casting shadow to the right. So the first thing I did was to use that piece of vine charcoal to establish the shadow side of the body. Now on top of that I'm going to use the, a touch of that uh, uh, other charcoal stick, the compressed charcoal stick a little bit more because I want some part of that shadow area to, to be a little bit uh, darker than the others. Right now it looks like a bit of a mess but as I'm blending and as I'm uh, covering that shadow side of the rhino's uh, of the rhino's head, and as I'm putting in some charcoal on the right side as well, to kind of uh, surround the light side of the of the head uh, with a darker area. Now you can see the the shape of the rhino is starting to pop out. These large contrasts, and of course I need to do a little bit of cleaning up with a paper towel because my fingers are a mess, but these large contrasts are what's important if you want to define uh, the overall shape of your main subject and to give them uh, volume to, to, make, uh, to make it look like we're looking at uh, three-dimensional objects. For that you need shadows, you need a range of value, and of course you need these large contrasts in value. And if you uh, look at my reference, you can see that I've uh, kind of increased that contrast quite a bit, especially between the background and the light side of my subject, because I really wanted the subject to stand out against that, uh, against that darker background. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do once I've done some work on these larger areas, and I've already put in a little bit of that uh, darker value on the in a part of that year. Now I'm going to start to work on some details. Uh, I'm working with my charcoal pencils and like I said these are Kokinor Jukonda soft charcoal pencils. Uh, now I'm putting in some of these larger or rather longer um, creases or wrinkles in the rhino skin. The rhino skin is very wrinkly and it's going to have a lot of these wrinkles and creases and folds and these will naturally form around the parts of the body where where the body twists and bends like for example on the neck and uh, some of them are going to be darker and larger than the others I also put in the eye which is one of the darkest details on my uh, drawing and after that I started putting in some smaller details like some finer textures like these smaller vertical and horizontal lines so that I can imitate the appearance of that rough uh, wrinkly uh, rhino skin. And uh, this can be a little bit frustrating if you're really trying to draw it exact, exactly as it is in the reference if you're trying to make a photorealistic drawing that would take forever but what I like to do is I like to simplify things and I like to approximate so that it kind of looks similar to the appearance of the rhino skin uh, yes I do check out my reference photo every now and then but I just try to stick with a general idea rather than uh, trying to put in every single line and wrinkle 
uh, where it belongs. So I'm just trying to capture that general appearance and um, you shouldn't get frustrated if it doesn't look exactly the same because it doesn't have to look exactly the same and honestly uh, once you've finished it's not going to be the first thing that the viewer will notice because the the first thing and the most important thing that people will notice will be this larger contrast that I've established first simply by shading the shadow side of the rhino's body and uh, face and head. So I'm working on these smaller details and uh, it's really up to you how much effort you want to put into that. If uh, you want to do a simpler drawing and not focus on this texture at all, uh, you can do that, but I think that would be more appropriate on a slightly smaller size drawing. Uh, this is more of a close-up of the rhino's head, which is why I feel kind of compelled to draw a bit more of these details and uh, more of these textures. The thing that I'm doing now is I'm starting to work with erasers. This is a kneaded eraser or a kneadable eraser, and I'm using it to pick off smaller bits uh, where I'm lifting up, uh, lifting off a little bit of charcoal, lifting up a little bit of charcoal, creating these lighter areas, and basically uh, trying to make the appearance of this skin, this rough skin, more three-dimensional because I'm cr increasing the range of value. I have these darker wrinkles, and then in between them, I lift up a little bit of charcoal making the spaces in between a bit lighter and that's what uh, makes that part of the skin kind of pop out it makes it uh, it makes it look like it's uh, um, more three-dimensional like there's more depth and volume in there um, and in addition to that I also like to use a pencil eraser the pencil eraser its advantage over the kneaded eraser is simply that it's more convenient. The kneaded eraser in a way is better because um, it doesn't really smudge as much and it doesn't leave any residue naturally but you can just dab with it or drag it to gently remove a little bit of charcoal here and there and the kneaded eraser also allows you to preserve some of the texture you've previously laid down. So if I put in a little bit of effort to create that texture by drawing all these horizontal and vertical overlapping lines to indicate those small wrinkles in the and folds in the rhino's skin, uh, if I just used a pencil eraser, um, sometimes that would rub out some of these smaller finer lines and that would destroy my texture but when you just dab with a kneaded eraser you can create these highlights and uh, define the lighter areas while at the same time preserving at least a little bit of that texture which is uh, which is which is very good because it doesn't really defeat the purpose of all that work you've done previously now here at the bottom you can see that this part of the rhino's body is also facing the light source and I'm kind of lifting up a little bit of charcoal on each and every one of these larger wrinkles and you can see how the light side of that body, the light, uh, part, lighter parts of that chest area and neck area are starting to pop out and how uh, the uh, how the contrast between that lighter side and the shadow side which is facing away from the light source is starting to increase and uh, with that also you're increasing that feeling that you're looking at a three-dimensional realistic looking object. Uh, after, uh, after that work with a uh, with a kneaded eraser I can always go back in and maybe add a few more details and wrinkles uh, but I do like to put these uh, lighter finishing touches last because it kind of makes more sense for me to do the uh, darker shadow areas first and then put the lighter areas on top. Now of course uh, with charcoal, unless you're using white charcoal, 
uh, you can't really work from dark to light. The only way to work from dark to light is to use erasers. And when you use erasers, you have to uh, use uh, a combination of erasers, the pencil eraser and the kneaded eraser, or you can just reserve the white space, simply leave some uh, parts of your drawing white or lighter, and then work with that. Sometimes you can't reserve the white space and you have to go back and work from dark to light simply by taking away value or doing negative drawing and uh, basically erasing. So our erasing tools, the kneaded eraser and the pencil eraser are essentially our drawing tools rather than tools for cleaning up because normally when people think of erasers they, they think of uh, those things that you use to clean up mistakes or uh, rub out mistakes here in realistic drawings we use them as drawing tools to draw lighter marks and lighter shapes and I'm really starting to like the contrast on that uh, chest area at the bottom uh, because it it's really starting to look realistic I also lift it up a little bit uh, on that uh, a little bit of charcoal in some parts of that shadow area uh, because there is a little bit of reflected light coming from the other side but I'm going to talk a little bit more about that once I get to the lower part of the head right, uh, right now I'm moving on to the other ear and as with the previous one this middle part here where there is the, the opening uh, is going to be a lot darker I want that really dark which is why I'm going to push that in with my finger to make sure that it remains dark because if I try to use some of the blending tools I may dig out a little bit of that charcoal dust and uh, make it a bit lighter in the process which is not something I really want I want this contrast I want this to remain really dark and then I'm just going to push the charcoal away from that darker area onto the lighter areas and then as a final touch I just pull some highlights around the edges which achieves two things uh, obviously it cleans up the edge but at the same time it allows me to establish that contrast I want this side of the ear to the left to be a little bit darker which is why I made the background uh, around it a little bit lighter now when you have a darker background like this uh, the, the easy and uh, gentle way to make it a bit lighter without actually using erasers is to is to use uh, something that will lift up just a small amount of charcoal now erasers will leave a fairly clean mark and I don't want that because I want the background to be smooth and I don't want it to be distracting but if you want to create these smooth transitions from slightly lighter areas to darker areas you can just use a clean brush go over the part of the background that you want to make a little bit lighter and then it will remove or lift up a little bit of that charcoal dust here as you can see I'm moving on to this wrinkly area around the ears and the top of the head uh, these are like those uh, wrinkles on the forehead but these are a lot deeper and obviously we have a lot of those around the ears as well because uh, the animal can move uh, move these ears in all directions to soften these I'm using a combination of brushes and tortillions and there's also a nice shadow here going across the top of the head and this shadow is coming from the ear on the right that ear is casting this long shadow to the left and I really like these long shadows because they uh, really help you create some extra depth in your drawing and I drew that shadow with a piece of uh, vine charcoal because uh, it's easier for me to control the shape and the amount of value that way now I'm softening those uh, wrinkles with a tutilin a little bit because I don't want these lines to be too clean I want them to be a bit softer I want them to look like actual wrinkles and they seem to be getting smaller and smaller as you move down towards the um, uh, middle of the head and closer to the closer to the horns 
and uh, that's why for that middle area where we have these smaller wrinkles I can't really use um, I can't really use those short strokes those short marks that I did uh, for those wrinkles because they are so small that I have to find another way to imitate the texture of the skin so I just hold my pencil kind of sideways and I try to drag it to produce some kind of rough texture and I use that in combination with those short marks and uh, with a little bit of blending and with a little bit of work with erasers hopefully I can produce something that looks close to uh, close to rhino skin. This again is an important part of the drawing process uh, when, when drawing these wrinkles and again I'm using an eraser to lift up a little bit of charcoal in between those wrinkles and to make them stand out, to make them pop out uh, and to make them more three-dimensional. When I do these things I have to keep remolding and reshaping my kneaded eraser because if I don't do, do that uh, it won't work it will simply pick up some charcoal and I will keep uh, putting that charcoal dust back in and I don't want to do that and also the kneaded eraser loses its shape a little bit as you work so when you want to work on these smaller details you have to shape your kneaded eraser so that it has a kind of a teardrop shape or a blade like shape that way you can draw some finer details and of course you can supplement that uh, with a pencil eraser which you can use exactly like you would a pencil and you can do a little bit of shading and create some smaller marks to imitate the texture of the uh, the texture of the skin and then I can work on top of that again with some pencils so I can go back and forth playing around uh, with a combination of erasers and pencils to see uh, what kind of uh, texture I can come up with. I'm just working a little bit with a pencil eraser and here and there cleaning things up with a kneaded eraser. Generally everything, I mean each and every one of those surfaces which is facing uh, to the right and up is going to be lighter because the light source is coming from the right and all of the shadows including the smallest ones will be cast from right to left so that's what I need to stay consistent with in order in order to make this look realistic and we already see in addition to the large contrast between the light side and the shadow side we already see a couple of larger shadows like for example that one which is going across the top of the head uh, the, the shadow from the ear and of course these shadows here from the horns uh, I added a little bit of texture to the nose you know, to the uh, to that horn to make it uh, look more like bone I suppose and I'm still going back and reworking some of the details and uh, textures on the skin <clears throat> I guess you can mess with it for hours if you feel like it but um, eventually I have to move on to other things now uh, the thing is that with these uh, larger wrinkles on the left I had to make sure that uh, regardless of the type of texture I produce on the skin to the left I had to make sure that these larger darker wrinkles needed to be more noticeable and that I uh, used more value on them so I uh, pressed a little bit harder with my charcoal pencils and charcoal pencils are obviously darker than the uh, than the vine charcoal that I used for shading that larger area even though I combined it with a bit of this um, charcoal from a charcoal stick now that smooth background can also be achieved with charcoal powder here I used uh, this charcoal stick if I want to make it a little bit lighter I can just use a little bit less of the material 
and then spread that around to make it uh, lighter or I can use more of it to push it in with my fingers and make it darker uh, I can do all kinds of things I'm just cleaning up the edges of these horns here and adding a bit more texture to them I'm adding both these uh, vertical marks as well as some horizontal ones I want to make it look like uh, the surface of them is kind of rough, uh, a little bit cracked and scratched maybe here and there. I mean, who knows what uh, what the rhinoceros use these uh, horns for, probably for fighting or maybe just knocking things over, who knows what they do. Don't really know much about the species and uh, all I know about their anatomy is uh, from what I can tell from my reference photo I'm kind of uh, working my way down uh, from those uh, from the middle of the head and that uh, horn area down to the lower part of the head and the snout if it, if it is a snout I don't know what it's called uh, in this particular case so I'm going to want to have that lower part of the snout a little bit darker but this part of the head here I'm going to make this a little bit lighter because I have a little bit of uh, reflected light coming from from the other side coming from below so this this part of the head here is going to appear a bit lighter it's still the shadow side mind you it's still darker obviously than the than the light side of the head but it is uh, a little bit lighter than the darkest portion of the of the shadow side of the head and i'm going to do that with a pencil eraser as you can see and the way i can um, create these um, uh, lighter marks which are not completely clean is simply by controlling the amount of pressure I simply drag my pencil without uh, using too much pressure and that way I can sort of just scrape uh, just a little bit of the material off the surface and make uh, that portion of the drawing a little bit lighter without actually making a very light clean mark and that's a very important thing to remember because sometimes you just want to make an area a little bit lighter without actually uh, without actually um, cleaning, it, uh, cleaning it up completely or making a very clean or almost white mark uh, in the place where you use your eraser so uh, with erasers as with any other drawing tool you just have to get used to them and you have to learn how to use them because uh, there are many different ways to use them. You don't always have to use the same type of stroke. You don't have to use the same amount of pressure. Uh, you can do all kinds of things. So here I'm finishing this part of the background to the left. And obviously uh, I'm going to need to push in the charcoal all the way to the edge of my main subject. And I'm going to have to clean up the edge uh, that uh, right edge so that uh, there is a clean edge between the main subject and the background that clean edge that sharp contrast in value is extremely important if you want the main subject to stand out against the background I don't want it to look blurry sometimes you can break that rule so that you can create some kind of an uh, out of focus effect maybe where some parts of the body which are closer to our viewpoint can appear uh, a little bit sharper and a little bit more defined while others can appear like they're just slightly out of focus but that's not going to be the case here because this uh, portrait of the rhino is mostly focusing on the head obviously and now I'm doing these uh, small wrinkles and folds on the snout area there's going to be lots of them and uh, I'm doing the same thing that I did on the top of the head and elsewhere I first draw these lines obviously some of them are thicker and darker than the others then I kind of soften them a little bit uh, with uh, tortillion in order to make them look more like 
three-dimensional shapes uh, rather than lines because when you do realistic drawings you will quickly realize that uh, you can't do the same thing like when you draw comics and stuff like that because a line needs to mean something. A line has to be some kind of a shape, some kind of a relationship between light and dark. So you have to explain uh, what is casting a shadow onto what and uh, you can't just leave uh, a simple black line. That's why you need to use your blending tools and shading. And obviously the, the nostril here is going to be very dark but I still need to define the lighter portions of that snout. But I'm going to do that once, I, once I'm sure that I have these darkest bits in place and I have a lot of these uh, dark lines for the wrinkles and um, for the textures uh, on the skin and I'm just uh, doing a little bit more work to clean up the edge of that horn as well as the right side of the head and just to make sure that the shape uh, looks more anatomically correct and after that <coughs> I can of course start using my erasers. In the shadow part of, the, of this uh, snout area I'm just gonna uh, use a little bit less pressure with my erasers and on the light side to the right I'm gonna use more pressure or if I'm using a needed eraser I'm just gonna make sure that the tip is clean and that I'm lifting up much more of the material than I would on the other side so you want to uh, keep uh, playing around with that needed race uh, keep uh, kneading it and remolding it because that way it, it's kind of soft warm and sticky and uh, it picks up uh, the charcoal dust obviously I'm going in between each and every one of these individual uh, shapes and uh, adding a touch of a lighter value to them and that kind of makes them pop out, that makes them stick out but I'm not gonna uh, make all of them uh, of equal value because I want to make it look like uh, the, uh, the ones that are further to the left and at the bottom are a little bit darker because they're further away or they're, they're facing away from the from the light source. So I uh, hope that my explanations are making sense and uh, that you'll that you'll find them useful. Uh, now I'm doing a bit more refining around some of the edges and the background and basically putting down some of the finishing touches mostly working with uh, with my charcoal pencils. Now the drawing is almost done and I'm just going to put my signature here in the lower right corner to wrap things up. As you can see I've removed the tape around my drawing and that's it. Uh, now if we go back and look at the reference photo I think I made some improvements to it because there is more contrast not just in my main subject but especially uh, with the background and the subject and I think the background because it's simpler is uh, less distracting and I, th I think it looks better this way so the drawing is done I hope you like it don't forget to subscribe give me a like comment and check out my other videos and of course as I've already mentioned for longer videos and more content you should check out my patreon thanks for watching and bye for now